Hey there, this is Brittany from Just Be Crafty. Today I'm demonstrating how to do the seat stitch. The seat stitch is one of my all-time favorite stitches, so I'm super excited to share this technique. I've made multiple projects with this stitch and we'll have a few of them linked in the description box below, so that way you can check them out. Seed stitch is the fabric formed by alternating your knit and purl stitches. You will be purling into knit stitches and knitting into purl stitches as they face you. And the end result is a beautiful, dense fabric with a slight stretch. The alternating of knit and purl stitches creates little bumps that make the stitch perfect for dishcloths and washcloths, and so much more. Before we get started, I want to take the time to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you'd like, and hit the bell so that you never miss a new tutorial. And if you find the tutorial helpful, please be sure to let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. With all that out of the way, let's dive into seed stitch. Grab your yarn and knitting needles. The needles I'm using are a size 9 knitting needle. Um, it's what I had on hand. And the yarn I'm using is a 100% acrylic medium weight yarn. Um, a pretty standard yarn. I believe this is Loops and Threads. Yes, Loops and Threads Impeccable by Michaels. And so I'm starting with that. So start with your slip knot and cast on 20 stitches. And if you'd like, go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you have your 20 stitches cast on to your knitting needle. And if you're super new at knitting and would be interested in a video on how to cast on, let me know in the comment section below because I'd be happy to make a video if there's interest. Alright, so I have my 20 stitches casted onto my knitting needle. And now we're ready to begin uh, the seat stitch. Seed stitch is comprised of alternating between knit and purl stitches. So for this first row, we're going to knit one, purl one. So that first stitch, we're going to knit. And the second stitch, we're going to purl. So bring your working yarn to the front and complete your purl stitch. Now switch your working yarn to the back of your work and complete a knit stitch. And then you'll want to bring your working yarn back to the front to complete a purl. And just keep working um, knit one, purl one across your entire row. So if you like, go ahead and pause here and meet back up with me once you have um, completed your knit one, purl one across the entire row. Okay, so I'm at my last couple stitches. I'm going to knit one and then purl one. So now we're going to take a closer look at our stitches. So for seat stitch, you will knit into the purl stitches and purl into the knit stitches as they face you. Knits and purls are opposites of each other. When you purl a stitch, the back side creates a knit stitch. When you knit a stitch, the backside creates a purl stitch. So we'll flip this over just so you can see what I'm talking about. When we flip this over, you'll see that the last stitch is showing to be knit on this side, and the second to last stitch is showing to be purl on this side. And you can tell the difference between knits and purls as knits have a V-shape, while pearls have a bar shape directly under their corresponding loops on the needle. So that's how you can tell. So I suggest you to go ahead and pause here and just really orient yourself with your knits and purl stitches and just take a good look at them. So, you know, flip your needle back and forth and it just, so just hone in on one stitch. Pick, let's say a knit stitch and look at it to see what it looks like on the front and put your finger on it, flip it over, and see exactly what it looks like on the back. And you'll see what I'm talking about. So now we're ready to begin row two. And you'll see as that faces us, that first stitch appears to be knit. So we're going to purl into that stitch. The next stitch looks like a purl. So we're going to knit into that stitch. The next stitch is a knit stitch. We see that V. So now we're going to purl into that stitch. 
the next stitch. We see that little bar, so that's a purl. And now we're going to knit into that stitch. So you're just going to keep repeating this process of knitting into purl stitches and purling into knit stitches all the way across the row. So if you'd like, pause here and meet back up with me once you've completed your row. Okay, so I'm at my last two stitches. I'm going to purl. And then my last stitch is going to be a knit stitch. So I'm going to knit. And now you can start to see the seed stitch coming together. And now we can start on row three. So you can see that first stitch is showing as a purl stitch on the side. So we are going to knit into that first stitch. The second stitch, you can see the V, and so that is a knit stitch. So you purl into that stitch, and so on and so forth across the row. So that first stitch is a purl, so we're going to knit into that. The second is a knit, so we're going to purl. The next one, that's a purl, so we're going to knit into that stitch. And this is what you're just going to be doing from here on out for seed stitch. You're going to be knitting into the purls and purling into the knits as they face you um, for every single row. This is what your work should start looking like and it's a great fabric it looks the same on the front and back and you can kind of see how it got its name seed stitch they look like little the little stitches formed look like little seeds so what happens if we accidentally knit into a knit and purl into a purl so let's see so I just knit into a knit stitch and now I'm going to purl into a purl stitch and I'm just going to do that for a couple stitches. So I'm going to knit into the next one. And then purl onto the next one. And let's just knit into the next one. So now if you take a close look, you've created a one by one ribbing. That's a knit one, purl one ribbing. And see how that looks different from the seed stitch? You see that the knit stitches are lined up and the purl stitches are lined up and it just, it looks completely different than, um, than your seed stitch. And that's how you can tell you did something wrong. To fix it, just unravel a couple stitches at a time. So hold your stitches, secure them with your thumb, and then just slide them off of your needle and then pull the yarn um, to unravel and then stick them on your right needle and then slide them back onto your left needle and just keep repeating that process of slowly sliding those stitches off and unraveling them just one or two at a time until you get back to a place in your work where um, the mistake is all pulled out. So it looks like I have one more to slide off. And now we can keep knitting our seed stitch. We can keep going on our merry way. So that next stitch, that's a knit one. So we're going to purl into it. And then we're going to purl into that next knit stitch. And now flash forward, we're almost at the end of our row. I'm just purling into that last stitch. And there you have it, that is seed stitch. So I encourage you to actually just keep working back and forth in rows until you have this down. Because as they say, practice makes perfect. I'm gonna flash forward here in a second and 
Now, this is what it should look like after a few rows. I absolutely love this stitch. I think it is so pretty and it's so versatile. It makes for great dishcloths and um, I'll have, I use this in multiple patterns of mine and I will have some, I'll have those linked below. So I actually decided to make myself a little coaster um, out of this swatch and um, so I measured it. It's about five and a quarter inches wide and so I just knitted seed stitch up for about just about um, five inches and now I'm going to show you how to cast off in seed stitch. So to cast off we are going to once again you're going to knit into the a purl stitch and purl into knit stitches so that first stitch is a purl so I'm going to knit into it. So I'm knitting into that first stitch and then the second stitch I'm going to purl because it's a knit stitch and now I'm going to slide that first stitch up and over the second stitch and off of my needle and that is my first bind off stitch. So now in the next stitch I'm going to knit because that one is a purl. So I'm knitting that stitch and now I'm sliding that first stitch up and over the second and off of the needle and that's my second bind off. The next stitch is knit so I'm going to purl into that stitch. Keep repeating this process as you move across the row and you have bound off all of your stitches. Okay, so now I just have two stitches remaining. So that last stitch is a knit, so I'm going to purl into it. I'm purling into that stitch. And now I'm going to slide that first stitch up and over the second and off of the needle. And now I'm just about done. So with one um, stitch left on the needle, we can go ahead and clip our yarn and just drag your tail through that loop. And now we're done. I really hope that this helped you out and that this will help you out with your next project that you have to complete seed stitch. Um, and I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already and would like to, feel free to subscribe so that way you never miss a new tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!